Good evening, this is Quintus Curtius. Welcome back to the podcast. And in this podcast, we're going to be talking about how to deal with someone with an uncontrollable temper. In other words, what do you do when you have to deal with someone who has anger issues? Or can you even do anything? I guess that's the the other question. So we'll we'll be probing into that uh, that topic here, and the the reason that I decided to talk about this subject here is I received an email today from a reader. Looks like a nice guy here, and without getting into too much in the way of detail, I'll read off a little bit of his email. He says, "Hey Quintus, I've been puzzling over an issue for a good long time and listening to your." YouTube videos and hearing your sage advice to so many people makes me want to get your take on this issue. Um, essentially what he says, he has a, a, a brother with an uncontrollable temper. And he says every time he tries to offer constructive criticism, this brother flies off the handle, goes ballistic, and lashes out. And this has the effect of really degrading the relationship between the two of them. And it looks like there was a specific trigger here for this, his email. It looks like he uh, recently had a birthday incident here. And uh, to make a long story short, tempers got uh, elevated. Somebody said something to somebody else and there was an incident and... He flew off the handle again. And so he says, you know, he sent him some Stoic philosophy books, which he thought would help him. And he has tried to recommend different strategies and different things he can do. But I guess he's this guy is in his early 30s and he's just got bigger issues. What, what really jumped out at me was he said that this guy has been absent without leave from the military for like, you know, over a year. AWOL is the is the word, which is a pretty serious thing, okay, which is a pretty serious thing. And so his question is, what, what do you do to help somebody that makes it so difficult to help them? And, you know, this is a good question because you can apply this question not just to people with anger issues, but to people with any kind of issue, with drug issues, gambling issues, uh, food addiction issues, uh, whatever weakness that they may have whatever weakness that they may have. All right, now the first, let me make a a couple observations here. First, before we get into the the heart and guts of this thing. First thing is, you know, it sounds like, just from reading this email, it sounds like this is is not just your normal, uh, sullen, angry individual. This is someone who has some real problems. And I, the reason why I say that is because if you're if you're going AWOL from the military, it doesn't say what branch, but if it's I can I can guarantee you if if it's the Marine Corps or the Navy, you're going in the brig once they catch you. I mean that's a serious violation. If you go AWOL, and and when they eventually catch up with you, which they will, you can expect to be dishonorably discharged, probably court-martialed, at the minimum. Uh, possibly could even have to do more time, so it's it's really bad. It's it's a it's a very bad situation, and it's not something to be taken lightly. And and again, I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad here, but when I see something that serious, it, it tells me that hey, this th- there's some major issues going on here. There's some major issues going on. It could be there's uh, deep seated psychological issues, emotional issues, possibly substance abuse issues. Okay, possibly. So at the very minimum, and it doesn't say or look like from this email that this guy has ever received any kind of therapy or counseling or any anger management or anything like that. And, you know, it's easy for people to uh, criticize that stuff. But let me tell you, that stuff really does work, okay, for the right people. When someone is willing to listen, when someone is willing to turn around their life, and do the right thing. Those therapies actually can do a lot of good. Okay, and I, I've I've seen it happen just firsthand with 
uh, you know, my own job uh, in, in, in dealing with people who, who have had to visit those, those folks. So there's, there's definitely some deep-seated issues going on here. And that's, I guess that's the first thing. And I guess the second issue I want to say, and this is probably the really comes down to the heart of what we're talking about here is one of the most frustrating things about life that we all have to come to grips with is the fact that we can't help people who don't themselves want to be helped. I'll say that again in a different way. You can only do so much. You can only do so much. When someone is unwilling to take action to change things for themselves, to change their own lives, or to change their own life, then no amount of berating, talking, debating, discussing, cogitating is going to do any good at all. Because it has to come from within. It has to come from within that person. It's very similar to alcohol and drug addiction. If someone is an alcoholic or a drug addict, you can throw at them the best programs in the world. Best programs in the world. And it's not going to do any good. Will not do any good. And, you know, it's easy to laugh at at, uh, certain things. You know, you you may uh, may not, but you may laugh at this. Many years ago there came out back when I used to actually get cable. I, I don't now. I just found it wasn't worth it. But when I used to watch cable, or I, I used to receive cable, there was a series on, um, I think it was either VH1 or one of those cable channels about like celebrity rehab, I think is what it was called. Celebrity rehab. And they had a number of installments. Celebrity rehab, one, two, three, four. I think, I think they did four or five seasons or uh, something like that. And the premise of the show is a reality show, mid two thousands reality TV culture. And they would get a a group of celebrities who had addiction issues, whether it was drug addiction, alcohol addiction, sex offend, uh, sex addiction, and they would get them, and they would get them to tell their stories and uh, show their progress, and you know. What looked like cheap exploitation entertainment to me turned out to be very, very uh, revealing. I found it very educational. I really liked uh, these series, Celebrity Rehab. And the reason why I liked them was because I thought they were very instructive as to what the nature of addiction can do to people. You know, there was there would be like an initial interview where the doctor Drew Drew. what was his name? Drew Pinsky, I think it was what his name was. This fa- this uh, sort of quasi celebrity addiction specialist, and he would interview the, these the people on the show, and they would talk about how they got to where they were, and then he would talk about their goals, and um, you know, uh, each and everybody had a story, everybody had a reason, everybody had a story, but. You could tell pretty quickly in the in the the program which ones were going to make it and which ones were not. You could just kind of tell. There were some that were in denial and they were angry and they were evasive and they were stubborn, unresisting, or I'm sorry, unyielding, impervious to treatment. And then there were others who were willing to open up. There were others who were willing to um kind of accept the guidance that was being given. They, they were willing to submit themselves to the, uh, the to the treatment. And I think that's an essential part of being helped. You've got to admit that you have a problem. You've got to su- submit yourself to a higher authority so that you can be able to receive the information that's being provided. And if someone is not willing to do that, then... They're going to have serious problems, serious problems. They're not going to be successful. So my recommendation, you know, if you ever get a chance, and these series, you may be able to find them, I don't know, uh, maybe on reruns or Netflix or I don't know, somewhere. Uh, If you get a chance to watch these shows, you might want to consider watching them because they are a great window into the mind of the addict, of the person who needs help and how some people are willing to get it and some are not. And there are some people that appeared on that show that are no longer alive today. You know, they, they took a stab at it, 
didn't work, didn't take, or they, they were not willing to change. And you know, it's very sad. It's very sad in some ways because if you work in the type of a job where you have to help people, you're able to bring your experience and knowledge to the table. And often this can be experience and knowledge that took years to acquire, that may have taken years of training and, and, and time in the trenches really to acquire. And when you have this knowledge, the best thing that you can do with it is try to impart it to your clients. But yet, if someone is not willing to listen, if someone is unwilling to hear you, it's going to fall on deaf ears. It's going to fall on deaf ears. And that can be very, very difficult to accept. At least for me anyway. I don't know, maybe there are some people that don't care, that don't, don't have a problem with it. But for me, it's hard to accept. It's hard to accept that somebody can just willingly not want to improve, not want to be helped. And for those people, what's going to have to happen is one of two things. The world is going to teach them, first of all. Number one, I, I wrote an, an essay on this. You can find this on my site, qcurtis.com. I think, I think the, title of it is, the title of it was, The World Will Teach You. And the world is going to teach you one way or another. You can ignore treatment and you can play the game of saying, I don't, I'm don't, i not going to listen. Yeah, hey, you know, screw off. Uh, but, you know, an individual might not teach you, but the world will definitely teach you. And that way of being taught might be vastly more harsh than is if you got that advice or guidance from a private party. Okay private individual so what's going to end up happening is if this if uh, like the guy who wrote me the email if this if this relative of his is not listening and he's just going to continue to plow ahead oblivious to all the dangers he's going to run smack into a brick wall and then he will change eventually because if he doesn't change he's, he's not going to make it he's just not going to make it either you change or the world changes you for you the world makes you change. And um, I remember seeing years ago a, a biography, uh, not a biography, but a, a documentary of Alcatraz. They had uh, uh, a documentary story about the, the prison of Alcatraz. And they had some of these old old um, uh, inmates who had stayed there back before it was closed, I think in the early 60s or mid-60s or whenever it was. And, you know, so one of the, I remember one guy, he, he kept saying, yeah, you know, in those days when I was young, you couldn't tell me nothing. You know, if you if you said anything to me, I would just come right at you. I was just I was all I would have been all over you. You couldn't tell me nothing. And that's what he was. And, you know, uh, he said, but he says, you know, uh, after about a decade or so in Alcatraz, I changed real quick. You know, it just it just beat all the all that piss and vinegar right out of me. It just tamed me. And that's what will happen. You know, eventually you grow old and all of your confrontational energy is dissipated. It just evaporates. And eventually you just you become defanged. So the idea is, the ideal, I think, is to try to prevent that from happening. Try to change yourself, change your ways while you're still young so that you can enjoy life. But yeah, it's uh, it's frustrating. I wish I had better news for this guy. I wish I had better insight. But all you can do, I and mean, this guy sounds like he's a, he's a loyal family member. He's doing everything that a responsible family member can do. But it's it's out of his hands at this point. It is out of his hands. Out of his hands. It's in the hands of fate. That's all you can do. You can put your seed out there and some of it will fall on fertile ground. Some of the seed will fall on rocky ground. Some of it will fall on land that's somewhere between fertile and rocky. And, and so, so basically, it's a mixed bag, you know. The peop some people will listen and some will not. It's all you can do. And I think once you start to accept that, you will yourself be well on the way to appreciating a, a fundamental truth here of the world. So that will be it. That will uh, that'll wrap up this uh, podcast here. I'm Quintus Curtius. Good night.